Today we are going to create a rain drip effect. To be able to create this effect, you need a rain drip texture, which is this. The red channel and green channel are the X and Y component of the drip normal map. This texture does not have Z component of the normal map, and that is okay. We are going to approximate the Z component of the normal map to 1. And that is okay, you will see that later in this video. The blue channel of this texture is the mask for the rain drip itself. And at last, alpha channel is a constant random grayscale value for each rain drip. This will help us to randomize the rain drip later. I put the download link of this texture in the description, but I also show you how you can make this texture easily. It will take a few minutes with the game to create this texture. Well, this is GIMP, just create a new project. I set the size of my project to be 1024 by 1024. Well, now because we want to make this texture seamless from top to bottom, just put the height value 3 times of 1024. You will understand what I mean in a moment. I want to create 8 different rain drip. To do that, I just need a grid to see where I am painting. Go to image, configure grid and set the horizontal value to be 128 and vertical value to be 1024. Then change the color of the grid to be able to see that with our black background. Now go to the view and activate show grid. Well done. Now we should activate symmetrize painting between these three vertical levels. Go to the window, dockable dialog, and make sure you activate symmetry painting. After that, symmetry painting panel will appear. Inside this panel, choose tiling. Set the tiling value for X to be 0 and for Y to be 1024. Now if we paint, we have symmetry in vertical direction. Okay, now it is time to use your artistic skill and paint some brain drip. Just make sure the top and bottom are connected so the rain drip will flow continuously. Well, I am really not good at painting. I also at school, I always had problem with painting. That is okay for now. Now just change the canvas size to correct size. Here is our final image and now we are sure that it is seamless in vertical direction. I just duplicate that to have a backup layer and now just blur a little your image. We blur that because this way the edge of this rain drip become more soft. Now just duplicate this layer and in this layer we want to create normal map. So go to filter, generic and click on normal map. Here, because we generate this normal map for Go.Engine, make sure to flip the Y component. Click on OK, and now we have a normal map. Well, the last thing to do is to create a random grayscale value for each rain drip. Just don't make zero grayscale value or close to zero, because this grayscale value will affect on the speed of each rain drip. And if you set that to zero, it will cause the rain drip stay at its position. Well done. Now we have all of this texture that we need. Just save them. Here I open normal map. Go to color, component, decompose. This will put each channel of normal map to a separate layer. Remove blue layer and add other two texture here. Go to component. Compose, choose RGBA as color model, and click OK. When you save that image, make sure to check save color value from transparent pixel. Well done. Now let's go to Godot to create our rain drip. Here we are in Godot. I just create a simple shader, so I define this uniform. And here I just set their values. I hope up to this point everything is clear. Well. Now I declare another uniform for my rain drip texture up here. And I assign the rain drip texture which we created in GIMP to that. Down here I just define a UV coordinate for reading from rain drip texture. Right now I assign that to UV, but this is not really a correct thing to do. Because the rain drip always come from top to bottom. 
and there is no guarantee to your UV coordinate always have same direction. Like this cube, which each of this side is in a different direction. Right now, I am not worried about this, and at the end of this video, I'm going to correct this. Now, read from the texture with this UV. Next thing that I'm going to do is to recreate normal map from X and Y component of the trick. And I set the Z component to be 1. This is not a big deal and it will work. Now let's see our normal map. So this is working. We don't want to apply our normal map everywhere on this surface. So we define a float as a mix ratio. Then I mix this normal map with original normal map based on this ratio. Now if I change this to 0, I will have the original normal map back. As we know, we have a mask for our drip in blue channel. So here, if I use blue channel of my drip for my mix ratio, I will have this. So now we only apply our mask where the rain drip is. Okay, so what is the next step? Now what I want to do is to create a horizontal band to show only a small portion of my rain drip. For that, I'm going to use a gradient texture. Here I just define a gradient texture uniform and for now just set a one dimensional gradient to it. So to be able to see this gradient I just define a float variable here and I'm going to read from gradient texture. Here also you should change the x and y component of rain drip uv so this gradient texture will be appear from top to bottom. Now if I show this texture, it's look like this. Now let's try to create a horizontal band with this gradient texture. So this is what I created. As you can see, we have a white part in front and then it is going to slowly fade out. Now just multiply this band to mix ratio. Let me change a little bit the gradient texture. So as you can see, the rain drip only appeared in this region. Now before animating this, uh, I just want to make this more like a water. And at last, I'm going to animate this. First, I'm going to change the roughness of this water to be zero. So I'm going to mix this with original roughness based on mix ratio. Now I just set the specular of my material to be 0 0.5 and a specular of water to be 1. Uh, so as you know, water deformed the texture behind them. We are going to make this effect by modifying UV coordinate. So to do that, I just copy this line of code to bottom to be able to move its UV coordinate. Now I create a deform UV. In a video about raindrop, I just changed the deform UV with a noise texture. But now I realize this is not necessary to import another uh, noise texture. In fact, if you move the original UV by roughness, it is going to do the job. And multiply the roughness by a small amount to reduce the UV deformation. Now just mix this UV with original UV based on mix ratio and put the result inside albedo. Well done. Final thing that I want to do is to be able to change the color of the rain drip. So on top I define a color uniform. And here I'm going to mix colored albedo with original albedo based on mix ratio. Okay, now we can also change the color of the rain drip. So now let's animate our rain drips. For that we should animate drip gradient texture. Here I just create a UV for gradient texture which change by time. I multiply time by a small number to reduce the speed of animation. Now we use this UV for reading the gradient texture. Okay, they all move together. But we have a random value which is stored in alpha channel of my rain drip texture. And now, if I multiply time with that, all of my rain drip will move at a different speed and this will be our result. Because we designed this texture to be seamless in y direction, 
you can just also scale that with no problem. Now let's correct the UV coordinate for this trip. To show you the problem with the UV coordinate of brain drips, I just created this box. As you can see here, the drip here moved from bottom to top, here from left to right, here right to left, and here top to bottom. And there is no way to correct this with UV coordinate. So the way we can correct this is by using the board position instead of UV coordinate. For that, please watch my video about using the word position instead of UV. There I explain how you can use word position in your shader code. So I assume you watched already that video. Well, in that video, we project the word position from front, side, and top. Here we don't need to project from top because range rip is going to move only from top to bottom. So here I just grab vertex and normal from my vertex function. And down here I just mix my pose in x, y and z, y plane with my normal dot x. So the drip move from bottom to top. You can correct this by multiplying my pose dot y to minus 1. Now I just define another uniform for my rain drip scale. So I can change the scale of my rain drip. Here I made a mistake. I should have write my pose.zy. Sorry about that. Now everything is working as should. So to make sure this is working good, let's apply that on a different mesh. Here I apply this on a sphere. So this is good, but we can make it better by removing the rain drip on top and bottom part. I do this with Y component of base normal. If you want to know more about this, please watch my video about how to blend. So here I define another varying which is called up, and I set the value of up by applying a smooth step function on Y component of normal. If I show you the value of the up in albedo, it is like this. Now I adjust this value a little bit more. And finally multiply that with max ratio. And as you can see in top section of the sphere and the bottom section of the sphere, we don't have rain drip. And this was about rain drip. I hope you like this video. Till the next video. Bye.